everyone and welcome to Jack and Cat Adventures. Today we're going to be making red wine braised short ribs. Now, if you have a big family, you're going to need a lot of short ribs because there's not a lot of meat on them. It's all for flavor on these, okay? So um, to start with, you're going to need a pot that can go into the oven after we're done cooking in it, okay? So um, what we're going to start out with is um, three to four pounds of short ribs bone in, two tablespoons of olive oil in your pan, get that heated up, have your oven heating at 350. Okay, we're going to get that heated up. While that's heating, you're going to need two carrots diced, two um, celery stalks sliced, a big onion diced, and um, crushed or finely diced three cloves of garlic. You're going to need uh, three cups of beef broth, two cups of red wine. I'm using, what am I using? Uh, right on the counter there. Cabernet, Cabernet. Sauvignon. 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 Um, and you're going to need some fresh herbs, rosemary, oregano, and thyme. Now, um, you're going to need to start this pretty early. It takes about three hours in the oven after we start it. So it's a long process, maybe a Sunday meal for you guys, but you won't regret the time, believe me. So I'm going to get started. My pot's hot. I'm going to put these in and I'm going to brown them on all sides. And don't cloud them. Just do it in stages. And I'm going to grab another plate. I like using these plates because I just throw them away when they're done. We're going to put the cooked meat on a clean plate, okay? So I'm just going to let those get brown. I have all my stuff, stuff prepared ahead of time, so it's just go quickly. So when you're starting your meat, you're going to want to rinse it and you can't dry it, okay? And salt and pepper all the sides. It smells good just on the meat there. It, it smells, smells delicious. Really and if you have one of these um, cast iron pots, they're great for this because they slow cook, they stay hot, and it just keeps that heat in there and keeps it cooking. And be careful because you will get splashed with oil. Just trying to get them further down into my pan. And now you want to make sure they're braised good. And when I say braised, I mean a good browning on the side. Because that's where you're going to get your flavors, in the bottom of this pan. You want to do all the sides of the meat? Yeah. See, that's braising. That's perfect. That's braising. And see, it doesn't take much time at all to pan this hot. about five minutes on each side maybe. Mine's pretty hot. I'm taking about two. It's going to cook a long time in the oven. You're not cooking the meat in this pan right now. We're going to cook it in the oven. Just giving it some color. Just giving it color, exactly. Color like that. One more in there. Now to get started. While you're watching me do this, go ahead and subscribe down below to our YouTube channel. Uh, that way you get the new content when it right when it comes right out. Okay, and we have a lot of content. Click the like. Click the also like button. Click the little bell for the notification. So when I launch the videos, you'll get notified when the new ones come out. And click the thumbs up button on the videos. That helps the algorithm for YouTube. And that helps us out. This is probably the hardest part of this meal is browning the meat. And that's not hard. Alright, my meat is all brown. 
And now we're going to, oh, let me do that side just a little bit more. And what you're going to do is we're going to add our chopped onion and we're going to cook that till it's translucent or see-through. I'm going to turn mine down a little bit because I don't want my onions to burn. That's perfect. Okay. So we're going to cook these for about five minutes just until they're translucent. Keep stirring them around. Something that's a little too high. Just remember, this pan holds heat, so it will burn your food quickly if you're not paying attention. And your fingers. And your fingers. Okay. So we're just going to let those become translucent. All right, now that my um, onions are translucent, I'm going to add my carrot, carrots and my celery. And we're going to cook that for three to five minutes more. And keep scraping the pan of all those um, drippings from the meat because that's what gives us all the flavor. Now we're going to add our chopped garlic, our crushed garlic. Or minced garlic. We're going to cook that for about, let me see, just a few minutes. And we're going to add two tablespoons of tomato paste. Now with tomato paste, you really need to cook it a little bit to get that floury taste out. We're going to stir that around. Now don't cook that garlic too high because it will burn and it will ruin your dish. We're really just getting ready to cook this um, tomato paste so it doesn't taste like flour. That's all we're really doing. Okay, and we're going to, now you're going to pour in your wine. And you're going to let this cook for 15 to 20 minutes or until the wine reduces. So I'm just going to stir this and then I'm just going to let it go and keep an eye on it till the, the uh, wine reduces. All right, my wine's reduced. It didn't take the full 15 minutes. See how thick it came? That's what you want. Now you're going to add three cups of beef broth. You're going to add your meat back in. I'm trying to get them underneath the um, juice. Just, you know, roll them in the juice so they get all the flavor. Now, this would be great for a dinner party because it's a very elegant meal, but very simple. The only thing is you need to make sure you have enough meat for everyone. Like I said, there's a lot of bone and a lot of fat on these, but it's so worth it, okay? So mine are all in. Okay, now we're going to add two bay leaves and make sure, in case I forget to tell you, at the end we take the bay leaves out, one sprig of thyme, one sprig of rosemary, actually, you know, I think I'm just going to do a half a sprig of rosemary, I'm not a big rosemary fan, and then I'm going to do one sprig of oregano, we're going to cover it and put it in the oven for two and a half to three hours. That's it. All right, so here's our finished uh, short ribs. They look and smell amazing. They fell right off the bone. Um, an hour before they were done, we cut up some uh, fresh mushrooms and put them in just for a little added flavor and more of a um, heartier so-called so stew type thing. But Try this, you guys. You will not be disappointed. So please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And remember, you do you.
Thank you.